Hello everyone and thank you for watching Edupedia World Videos. My name is Ahad and I'll be your guide in this tutorial today. We're carrying on from our previous video tutorial on the basics of accounting and the principles of accounting. Uh, we started off by defining accounting which is the recording, classification, presentation and analysis of financial transactions in an organization. Um, the framework of accounting is based on the nine principles of accounting which uh, we spoke started with the, the first three in the previous tutorial. Um, the nine principles themselves are accrual, prudence, consistency, going concern, matching, materiality, monetary, revenue, and time period. Now we're going to be moving on to the next three for today, which are the going concern, the matching, and the materiality principles. Let's start with the first principle today, which is the going concern principle. Now, this principle specifically states that all transactions should be recorded with the assumption that the entity will continue to function in the foreseeable future. Now, this basically means that regardless of how business is performing, all transactions should be recorded as tomorrow is another working day, let's say. Uh, this is perhaps one of my favorite of the nine principles, specifically because of its positive approach to accounting. Uh, now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Uh, does that mean that if we know that the company is suffering a loss, should we just keep smiling and keep doing our work? Uh, it's not exactly what it implies. The principle states that each and every transaction should be recorded with the same ethical and professional principle as the last. The transactions should not be recorded as if there is any doubt to their authenticity. Uh, moving forward with this thought, we should not record any losses until and unless they have occurred. If you, let's say, own a manufacturing company and one of your clients made a big order in order to stay in business but was unable to pay you the full amount, so much so that you know you might suffer a loss. Now, that does not mean that just because you're expecting to suffer a loss that you record it immediately. I mean, first of all, how do you know that it's going to be a loss? You're 90% sure, but what about that extra 10%? Could turn out to be a success, right? I mean, what if the sale turns around and be a big success and your customer actually is uh, happier with you for giving that short leash to operate and uh, knows that, you know, this is one supplier that's going to give me those terms that no one else will and will actually keep coming back to you, which is actually going to be in your favor. I mean, if the sale turns out into a big success, you know, you're, you just bought yourself more business. Or better yet, uh, if a business owner is about to suffer a loss on a transaction, why actually even go through with that transaction? I mean, that's just common sense, right? If you know you're going to suffer a loss, then why even go ahead with that transaction? I mean, why not just avoid it altogether instead of recording the transaction and then recording a loss? Just avoid the loss altogether, right? But that's what the going con uh, principle applies, that you need, whether or not, that's more of a business decision. The going concern principle applies that if your company is operating in a certain manner, it should continue to do so in that manner. Um, it simply states that future losses should not be recorded until and unless they are incurred. And assets and liabilities should be treated initially and later on consistently in a similar uh, manner regardless of uh, any foreseeable changes in the future. When those changes incur and they actually take place, 
that is when you can amend your assets and liabilities and the manner in which you handle transactions but until that happens you need to keep a consistent uh, basis for uh, accounting for your transactions so in summary the principle states that if you do in fact go ahead with the transaction you need to record it as it is as if nothing is going wrong and not instead of what it could turn out to be now we're moving on to the matching principle the matching principle states that each accounting transaction has an equal and opposite balancing finger that means that each debit has a credit so if you were to make a sale that would ultimately mean that a corresponding debit item would be received for example um, not to confuse you with debit and credit at the moment we're going to go into that a little later on but let's say you made a sale then eventually you're going to be receiving cash for that payment for that right so the amount of payment received should equal the amount of sale similarly if you're paying an expense or buying stock or whatever um, the amount of stock that you buy would of course be equal to the amount of cash that you pay out so naturally uh, both the amounts should be equal so the amount of cash leaving your side will be equal to the, the amount of stock that you purchase that is basically the accounting principle that each transaction has an equal and opposite balance of figure the debit is equal to the credit right now we're moving on to our third principle for the day which is the materiality principle um, the materiality here is defined as what is considered important to the financial understanding of the company's shareholders um, now it's hard to quite accurately define what is materiality because it's both a quantitative and a valued item of the financial statements. I'll try to explain it as best as I can. Um, materiality implies that a transaction which will have an impact on the shareholders is considered material to the financial statements. I mean, for example, sales figures or profit figures need to be accurate and appropriate so to give the owners a better idea of how their uh, company is operating whereas some transactions are a little less important for example uh, purchasing stationery that's not as important as the sales but it is still relevant to the financial statement but it's not material to the financial statements you see I'll try to give you another example by comparing two forms of uh, organizations let's say there are two companies that rent out an apartment for their business one's a small business company run by one person the other is part of a very large organization now both companies rent out that same a similar apartment at the same amount for the small organization this rent is material because of the amount it represents to the financial statements but perhaps the other company which is part of the large organization does not have such a burden of rent I mean it might own most of its buildings and premises and only rent one small apartment for its office premises for that organization this rent is considerably lower compared to let's say the cost of producing goods or the cost of salaries in the larger picture but for the small organization the smaller company that rent makes up a huge part perhaps even equal to the salaries that it pays so for the small company the rent is material whereas for the larger company the rent is relatively immaterial both the same amount but you see how the materiality changes in context of the size of the company now let's move on to the value um, the reason I say value is because not all figures can be quantified into what might be considered material 
I mean, for some companies, uh, their social impact or their relationship with their customers is by far a big part of how they operate. Whereas for other organizations, it's not. I mean, let's take uh, the same example of a big and a small company. Let's say you have an oil company that is engaged in drilling, uh, exploring, and even uh, selling, buying and selling oil. Now, naturally, it's going to have an impact on its surrounding environment and its consumers. So it has to have a very positive image in terms of how it is perceived by the community. Whereas, let's say we have a small retailer that only disputes that oil, or even yet a different industry where a storekeeper is just uh, buying and selling goods. Now, that small storekeeper isn't really going to care what uh, his uh, customers perceive as good or bad for the environment as long as they believe that they're getting a good value for their money from his store whereas for the larger organization that's involved in drilling and exploring and has an impact on the environment it's gonna matter not only what the organization's customers consider good for the environment but also what they consider good for the custom, uh, uh, for the uh, for their image of the company, so you see how materiality is different. For the bigger company, the materiality for is that their corporate responsibility is much higher. Whereas for the smaller organization, corporate responsibility is not so much material, right? So you see how different values and different figures impact uh, one's perception of materiality. It's a bit confusing, but just to give you a small uh, hint uh, and for quantifying what is material and what isn't, uh, we use a rule of thumb of the 5% and 10% rule. 5% uh, of the sales revenue or 10% of, let's say, the total assets or the net profit. If a transaction is equal or exceeds 5% of sales or 10% of net profit or total assets then it's material to the financial statements but if it's lower than that not so much secondly you need to realize what the industry that the company is working in if it is having an impact on the company then it is material that transaction is material to the industry it is material to the organization that sums up the three principles that we were discussing for today i hope you have fun and learn something